As we await the Women's Day celebrations due 8th March 2022, that is Tuesday next week, women in business have been encouraged not to run away from policies that govern the business environment in Uganda. My name is Sevia Tumichirze to take you through the prime edition. Moving on, African Continental Free Trade and Area came into existence last year. This was formed as a result of creating a common market for Africa and it's now a year as we now assess the impact and the challenges. Stephen Asimwe, the Executive Director Private Sector Foundation Uganda, discloses the impact and what needs to be done to better the agenda. The Africa Continental Free Trade Area came into existence on the 1st of January 2021. Uh, it came out as a result of concerted efforts by African leaders and the private sector to ensure that we have one big market that is uninterrupted and that there's a free flow of business, of trade, of goods, of services, of people. Because for a long time, for hundreds of years, we have traded with um, Europe and America and now the Far East has become a major partner. And yet we are not trading with each other. We share borders with Sudan, with Congo, with uh, Ethiopia, with Tanzania, with Rwanda, with Burundi. We are part of the East African community. We are part of COMESA. But we are not benefiting from trade with each other. Uh, our neighbors, the DRC, imports big uh, quantities of uh, uh, powdered milk. Yet we are saying we don't have market for that here because of uh, lack of uh, you know, trade agreements. So the framers and the designers and the, the orchestrators of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area wanted, and we believe strongly at the private sector, to create one big market. Our GDP has grown in the last 10 years by a couple of trillion dollars. Uh, our population has grown, which means there's a consumer market. So you have a big consumer market, our GDPs have grown, productivity, our growth fact, uh, numbers have gone up. But we are not trading with each other. We are trading with Europe, with America, with, the, with Asia. And yet Africa can become a, one huge market because of proximity. We speak the same language, we share borders, and uh, we have the same DNA. So the free continent of free trade area was created to create a much more concerted trade agreement with each other. Now, what does that involve? Involves, it involves removing what we call NTBs, non-tariff barriers, borders, customs requirements, uh, all sorts of uh, things that impede business, roadblocks, uh, currency differences. So it is envisaged that one day Africa will become one big market whereby it's like moving from Arua to Jinja and you are not interrupted because you are one big nice market where people are trading each other. Now, the East African community, the Common Custom Union, has created a very good case of the possibilities that are available. The ESC, since the 90s when it was started, has actually shown that you can develop trade better by having good rules, good trade agreements, and uh, better ways of doing business. Now we have one stop border post. Uh, we used to stop going crossing borders at midnight, at, at six o'clock. Now we, it's a 24 hour thing. Uh, we have improved infrastructure, airlines. Still not the best, but basically we've seen that uh, some of the, the best practices in East African community can actually be cascaded to West, North and South. Comesa has also shown us that we can do well uh, ECOWAS has some good practices. The Maghreb states in the north have shown we can do better. And so we are, we are excited that this SCFTA is coming and will improve uh, and show that we can actually buy from each other. Now, we have also seen that Europe and America, and to a very great extent now Asia, have very, very restrictive conditions of exporting to their country. It's now very difficult to export fruits, vegetables, fish, and many other commodities into Europe and America and Asia. It's very easy to transport our pineapples, our mangoes, our oranges, our fish, our matoke, our beans to neighboring countries and they consume. 
what is only disturbing us are those tariff barriers. A kilo of meat in Lagos goes for 70,000 shillings. A kilo of meat in Kinshasa is going for 65 to 90,000 shillings. Quality beef from Uganda. We have three flights now to the DRC. We are saying, can we improve trade relations and ensure that what we think is a lack of a market is actually there? Can we explore opportunities that can uh, take our things? The SCFTA is not just goods. It's also services. We have a very, very educated uh, group of young people. 75% of our population is under the age of 35. We have trained lawyers, ICT engineers, doctors, fantastic people. But the SCFTA also allows for professionalism, crossing borders. We can export our labor, intellectual property to these places. So the market is goods and services, but also it's a movement of labor, of, uh, of uh, facilities that can be taken. People can come to our universities. We now have over 50 universities in the country. It's an open space to come and learn, but remove impediments. You now see uh, school fees for Ugandans, but we are not giving special status to other African countries. And yet, our universities have capacity to teach much more than they are doing right now. Um, what the SCFTA is also envisaged to do is to improve infrastructure. The distance from our border in Kasese, in Pocha, and, uh, and, and, and Bunagana to the other side of Congo is about 4,000 kilometers. We're looking at a situation where we shall have a railway system which starts in Mombasa on the Indian Ocean and goes across Africa to Kinshasa on the Atlantic Ocean. We want more roads, more infrastructure, more airlines. Our airlines are still restrictive. Open skies is still a dream, but the SCFTA is envisaged to open more flights. When you're going to West Africa now, you first go to Europe, then you connect to a West African country. The SCFTA is envisaged to open our skies so that we have regional airlines that crisscross each other, that make it faster and better to do. And actually, Africa is a very rich country, a continent. It's a place we can explore, exploit professionally, and ensure that we get more jobs and our economy grows. It has been done in Asia. It has been done in Africa. The EU is the best example. Countries are consolidating business, currencies, systems. There is no reason why we can't do it with our, with our continent. And what is we are doing at uh, PSFU um, is, first of all, to ensure that our business population is well informed and understands the rules and engagement of the SEFTA. We have just uh, embarked on an exercise of identifying 250 micro, small, and medium enterprises and training them to be export ready to be able to tap into this market. We've actually conducted a series of workshops. I know that there is more uh, activity happening with the Ministry of Trade and, and other auxiliary agencies that are going to partner with uh, all of us. But what is important is that we want people to be prepared for that market. The issue of standards is very, very, very important. The issue of sustainability is very important. The issue of reliability is very important. The issue of digitization, uh, this thing of moving cash and is not uh, any more uh, tenable. So we are training people, we are preparing people, we are equipping people, we are skilling the business community, even the small ones, to be able to, to understand how the ACFTA works. The first set of people we have used and trained are going to become what we call TOTs, trainers of trainers. So we cannot reach the whole country. We can train a few people who then go out there and are able to uh, train others and show them that there are these opportunities. At the same time, we are working with the Ministry of Trade, the Export Promotion Board, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs with its uh, commercial diplomacy. We are working with the Bureau of Standards. We are working with airlines. We are working with immigration. We are working with NIRA. We are working with NITA. We are working with other private sector associations and members who are part of our consortium to ensure that we all understand this thing and take advantage of it. And I can tell you it is already producing very, very good results. Uh, in the last two weeks, we have signed what is, we are preparing for what is known as JPCs, 
joint permanent commissions with the DRC. Which, uh, we are taking a group of uh, business people to the DRC at the end of March. We are also uh, preparing to go to Burundi uh, as part of this discussion. It is true Burundi is part of the ESC, but in the broader framework of the SCFTA, we want to start going there and ensuring that the things we signed on come into practice. Due to its relative low altitude compared to the surrounding hills and its proximity to a wetland, the area is prone to flooding. Kalere merges with its immediate slum neighborhood to the west Bwaise. One may argue that Kalere is part of Bwaise. With its human settlement that started 40 years ago, it has several challenges with trade and other economic activities that have been thriving in the area. Kalere is a neighborhood within Kampala, Uganda's capital and largest city. Kalere is a busy roadside marketplace beyond which is a residential slum. Due to its relative low altitude compared to the surrounding hills and its proximity to a wetland, the area is prone to flooding. Kalere merges with its immediate slum neighborhood to the southwest, Bwaise. One may argue that Kalere is part of Bwaise. Human settlement in Kalere started in the 1970s, around which time trade and other economic activities were thriving in the area. The name of the settlement, Kalere, came from the railway line that used to pass through a section of this settlement. Landmarks that can guide people finding their way to the settlement include, among others, Kalere Market, Mawanda Road and Gaza Road. Kalere settlement extends to cover approximately 30 acres of land, all this land is all owned by private individuals. Mkwayapo, the chairman Dobizon Makere III, Kalere, says that there is too much congestion in the area and this has made or created room for disease outbreak like cholera, but he says that they have tried to set up preventive measures to ensure that the community isn't affected by diseases. Mbelanga tuli mugoteko, ne nga kufawa kule mbeze tufuwa nyo kulabati, tukeza ko okolo buyonjo, abantu wa fiba veri bachiba veri wala mkubwa nyo mba za kufuna zaachi. We are highly congested, but as leaders, we are trying to see that our people are healthy. Previously, we had cases of cholera, outbreaks, and government has not helped us in treatment and garbage collection. <laughs> Kalere 
kujanjaba abantu chikali ni tuwele nti nduwa de mwezili na inga sise zari wa de nyi nje nyo okusinza kuchifocha fungaba tufuwa nana the chairman still says government should help in setting up better trenches and also believes government should check on the issue of garbage and he advises the houses need clear planning since the congestion has been brought by poor housing structures. government <laughs> kasasiro atutawanya nini alejo tejiri mumbera nungi echi government yali bade kolachi yali bade echi tukolera ko nyo government yebintu ebikolachi kuba kasasiro bwabera nga tuchiride ko agenda mu miyala we ask government to help us manage the garbage as well as our issues of the trenches that tend to flood once it rains and also our houses have no plans like the other houses in more established societies. The word slum is often used to describe informal settlements within cities that have inadequate housing and squalid, miserable living conditions. They are often overcrowded with many people crammed into very small living spaces. Some of the residents settled in the area say that some of the key challenges they face is the flooding during rains as they lose property and their children are displaced as they say the commodity prices as well have made life difficult. <laughs> Amazi, Gatu Jula, Avana Nevamida, Vagana Nemcoca, Ghetto, Mbinio B, Injaga, Vasango, Vasango Vacola. It's always good when there is no rainfall. As once it pours, it becomes difficult for us to move since the whole area floods and so ghetto has become hard since even the houses are highly charged. Padani kia mwesa tu kuda waguru etano munana Techi alika tinyumba ya ala iso Ria kuma wechi koko chao buluji Soap is expensive here And we even have issues with toiletries And all I can say The ghetto has got worse some say government initiatives like Emioga have helped them develop and start up small businesses. However, still their savings are still less, but they try to make ends meet since they are limited jobs on the market. We thank the president for the Emioga funds and started up for our businesses. For example, we started our maths meeting and we want to save to buy some plots of land to avoid over-renting, but we pray government helps us with some more funds. In Kalere, even education is worse as most parents can't afford better education and the only solution schools have just like the headmaster of St. Paul Preparatory School reveals 
that parents pay in installments in order to see their children have education. The twin school school fees structure. Kubanga omuzad de tumukwa tanga boazi. Tosobola kusaba muntu eh sente za tasobola kuwa. We have no school fees structure. We just try to accommodate every parent. And so, we decide to receive school fees in installments. And we use the same to pay the teachers. We don't have any other word, income. Slum settlement comes at a time when the city of Kampala is experiencing unprecedented growth in the history of Uganda. This growth and expansion is visible through the mushrooming of informal settlements across the different divisions of Kampala, especially in the low-lying areas of the city. As informal and often illegal housing, slums are often defined by unsafe and or unhealthy homes, overcrowded homes, limited or no access to basic services like water, toilets, electricity, transportation. And lastly, local content creators have been urged to improve content output in order to attract a bigger viewership. Rebecca Mukike, the Public Relations Uganda Communications, says that there is need to improve content output so as to attract a bigger audience. Uganda is highly embedded with various media outlets, such as radio stations, social media, and also lately there has been a rising mass of online TV stations and radios at large. This in turn has resulted in high demand of content so as to stand the market competition in attracting more viewers. The vast population in the country is much interested in accessing foreign content, which for a time has benefited the social media participants, showcasing the content through attracting advertising endorsements. Rebecca Mokite, Public Relations, Uganda Communications Commission, has urged local content creators to boost creativity to ensure increased viewership. Whether or not the public loves local content more or foreign content more, but uh, I know with I know that the numbers for our local content have really gone up because already we have uh, content quarters in place that most broadcasters are already complying with. Our percentages are almost up to compliance percentages are almost up to sixty over sixty percent of complement to local content quotas of 70% content on the broadcast houses. A few weeks back, Uganda Communications Commission issued a warning to media houses showcasing more of foreign content and less local. This comes after concerns that were raised by the foreign content owners through the representatives to the Uganda Communications Commission about local media outlets showcasing their content without the required rights. The issue of copyright um, one, the Commission has been receiving complaints about uh, uh, content that has been, who's, uh, that has infringements on copyright. Some of the complaints have been coming from viewers. Some of the complaints have been coming from people who manage the copyrights on behalf of those entities or the content owners. So you find that the complainant might not be the actual actor or actress in the movie or the producer, but they do have agents who run their copyright on their behalf in different parts of the world. And some of those complaints come in from that angle. So you would imagine that how do these people get to know that maybe someone is airing this or that that doesn't, or that doesn't belong to them. but. Uh, you have to know that unlike in the past where broadcast was limited to our televisions, nowadays almost every station has an online channel, either on YouTube or on social media. And, what, and we all know that the internet is boundless. So the content you put on your station is seen across the world. 
inadvertently when you put it on an online platform. And if you have any corporate infringement going on with your content, those issues are flagged out by the community standards of those platforms because corporate infringement is a serious issue. And over and above, why air movies that you have no ownership on when we have local content, boundless local content that is of people whom you can engage with locally and who can undertake with you an arrangement to have their content on your platforms. So I think it's one of the things that are a win-win for our broadcasters, for our content producers and for the entire value chain. This has had an impact on the program schedules of the different media outlets, which creates a substantial future ahead of the local content and increased viewership for endorsements. Speak to whether or not the public loves local content more or foreign content more, but uh, I know with I know that the numbers for our local content have really gone up because already we have. Uh, content quarters in place that most broadcasters are already complying with. Our percentages are almost up to compliance percentages are almost up to 60 over 60 percent of compliance to local content quarters of 70 percent content on the broadcast houses. Well, thank you for keeping it Smart 24 TV. You can follow us on our social media platforms that is YouTube at Smart 24 TV. Facebook at Smart24TV and Twitter at Smart24TV, where we give you all the updates in the business world. My name is Sevia Tumichirize. Have a good night.